Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in Acts chapter 11, resuming our study today in verse 11. Get your Bible, open it up to Acts chapter 11. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. You can study all of the Bible with me right there by using my audio Bible messages. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the entire Bible. That's right, there's over 35 years of archives since the very beginning of Scripture verse by verse. It's all saved, it's all there for you to choose, click, and listen. All you need to bring is your Bible to the Bible verse by verse dot com and you are all set. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth your word is truth, in Jesus' name, amen. Acts chapter 11, verse 11. So Peter, after being told by God to accept the Gentiles who come to Christ, just as the Jews who came to Christ are all part of the church, Jew and Gentile, and they don't have to become Jews before they can become Christians. Just receive Christ, you're all set. So the Jewish Christians back in Jerusalem were appalled at this thought. And Peter went over there and he's explaining just exactly what happened when he went and visited Cornelius the Gentile and how they got saved, him and his household. So with that, verse 11, and behold, immediately there were three men already come into the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. Now he's relating the story of how God sent three men from Cornelius to get Peter to bring him home and tell him or tell Cornelius and household about how to get saved through Christ. And that's the story that he's relating here. Peter saw a vision, said three men are coming. Sure enough, no sooner was the vision over and three men were knocking at the door of Peter's house. As soon as the vision ended, three men were at Peter's door. They would supply the answers to this puzzling vision that God gave Peter. That seems so out of character. It certainly was with the Old Testament, but that's okay. The Old Testament rules and regulations, dietary laws and ritual laws and all that stuff, they passed away in Christ. And it is wrong for religions or preachers or people of any kind to try to put you under the Old Testament system, whether it's the feast days, the dietary laws, whatever it might be. It's wrong. I mean, if you want to eat that diet under the dietary laws, you just go right ahead. But it is wrong for you or anybody else to say that it is God's will for you to do that and that you must do that. This goes for keeping the Sabbath as well. Verse 12, and the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. Peter says, God told me to go with these three men to the home of a Gentile and not to worry about it. And now the Jews in Jerusalem also need to set aside the former barriers that existed between Jews and Gentiles and learn to accept the Gentiles in Christ, even without them being circumcised or going through any of the Old Testament Jewish rituals. It's not needed. Don't try to force them into your little mold. Jesus has accepted the Gentiles simply because they repented and they received him as Lord and Savior. And if God receives someone, we better not reject them. 13. And he showed us, how he had seen an angel in his house, who stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. So you see, God was working through both ends of this thing. This was not about Peter hanging out with Gentiles on a whim. He just didn't, like so many Pentecostals will say today, is trying to sound so pious, I sense in my spirit. That's another way of you saying, I think in my brain. Don't hand me this sense in my spirit. It doesn't impress me. This was nothing like that. 
Peter was not hanging out with these Gentiles because he sensed in his spirit or on a whim. The, th the entire thing was God's doing. God Almighty arranged the meeting between Peter and the Gentiles. And so the Jews in Jerusalem that Peter is telling this to, who were so appalled at the thought of Gentiles coming to Christ without becoming Jews first, they need to accept what's going on here. Peter is clearly teaching them that God was working in the life of Cornelius to tell him to send for Peter, and he was working in the life of Peter telling him to go with these men who came from Cornelius. God's the one who brought this whole thing together, and the, the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem better accept that. 14. <clears throat> Let's read 13 with it. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, who stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words by which thou and all thy house shall be saved. Because as of right now, Cornelius was not saved. Godly man, loved God, served God, tried to tried his best to keep the commandments and live for God, but he would have died, he would have went straight to hell because he needed to hear about Jesus. Don't tell me that there are, like Billy Graham said, I, I saw him say it, I heard him say it, on the Crystal Cathedral program. Oh, there's people from all over the world who will be in heaven who never heard of Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad to hear you say that, that pastor of that corrupt church said. Oh, yes, yes. Right out of the mouth of the devil himself. People from all over the world will be in heaven who never heard about Jesus. Liar, filthy, vile, stinking, corrupt liar. I don't care if he's an evangelical icon. He might have been all right in the beginning, but he said that, and that is absolutely, totally unbiblical and damnable and enough to condemn souls to hell who feel complacent about not having to take the message to lost souls. Who never heard of Christ. Oh, well, they'll be saved. I heard Billy Graham say it. <laughs> Liar. Then why in the world did Jesus say, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. The Bible says. So, you see that's what's going on here. God is bringing these two together because Cornelius needs to be saved. Cornelius was a God-fearing man, but he still needed to be saved. He needed to hear about Jesus Christ so that he could receive him. And we see from this again that God knows the hearts of all people. He certainly does. And if given a chance, someone, he knows if someone was given a chance that they would receive Christ. And if that's the case, I'm confident that God will somehow make it possible for that person to hear about Christ. But he must hear about Christ. Or he's not going to be saved. Cornelius was as lost as anybody. And God said, that's why I'm sending Peter, so that he can hear the words that will give him eternal life. Because right now he don't have it, obviously. 15. And as I began to speak, Peter says, as I began to speak to Cornelius and company, the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. So notice here, the Gentiles that Peter was talking to, they did not pray a special sinner's prayer to receive Christ. They were not baptized. They had not been confirmed. They heard the pure word of Almighty God coming from the lips of Peter and they received the message of Jesus in their souls. And God knew, because he knew he knows everybody's heart, he knew that these people repented and received Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so, as a result, God Almighty gave him, them the Holy Spirit as a result, and they were saved. And they received the Holy Spirit, just as the Jews did on the day of Pentecost. And for the sake of Peter who never would have believed that God would accept these Gentiles, and for the sake of the Jewish Christians back in Jerusalem, who never would have believed that God would receive these Gentiles,
God caused them to speak in tongues just exactly as the Jews did on the day of Pentecost. And that's how they knew that they were indeed saved and given the Holy Spirit. Verse 16, then Peter says, remembered I <clears throat> the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Remember, and what Peter is talking about was what Jesus said before he ascended into heaven. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he told his disciples that they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And Peter remembered those words when he saw it happen to the Gentiles. And so Peter knew what was going on. He knew that Jesus was there with him and Cornelius and the household. He knew that Jesus baptized Cornelius with the Holy Spirit, just as he did the apostles on the day of Pentecost, which meant that there was absolutely no difference between Jew and Gentile, <coughs> excuse me, as far as God is concerned, as long as they repented and received Christ as Lord and Savior. 17. Peter says, For as much then as God gave them the same gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? In other words, Peter is saying, when I saw what happened here and how they repented and received Christ and God gave them the Holy Spirit even though they were Gentiles, who was I to argue with God, said Peter. 18. And when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. God has granted repentance to the Gentiles so that they can have eternal life. <coughs> Excuse me. And don't overlook what he said here. God has granted repentance to the Gentiles so that they could have eternal life. Some people hate even the thought of repentance. They hate the thought of giving up their sin. But what they don't understand is that an opportunity to repent before they die is exactly what Peter said it is right here, a gift from God. That is a gift from God. If God gives you the word of God and helps you to understand it and is saying you can repent, that is an enormous gift from God because he wants to give you eternal life. Instead of becoming stiff-necked and angry when the Word of God tells you to give up your sin and receive Christ, one should be thankful for the opportunity and do it, because if they do, they won't burn in hell forever. That is an amazing gift from God. That's why Peter called repentance by Cornelius a gift from God because it gave them eternal life. There is no eternal life for anyone who just simply repeats the sinner's prayer and is told, well, you don't have to repent. Don't ever tell a, a lost sinner to repent, I've heard modern evangelical leaders say. Never, ever tell a lost sinner that they need to repent. Oh, don't do that. I will not tell you what I think of you, but I will just use the words of Jesus. You are a snake. You are a poisonous, venomous brood of vipers. That's what you are. For leading people down the easy road to hell fire, thinking that they are Christians simply because they repeated some prayer and you never told them about repentance because that's against your theology. Well, God is against your theology because your theology is helping to send people to hell. Repentance is always a part of salvation. It's a gift. And without it, you don't get eternal life. And that's exactly what Peter is saying. We'll stop right there for today. Study all of the Bible with me verse by verse. 
using my audio Bible messages at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and God's Word. Also, when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and perfectly give as the Lord may lead. Thank you for studying with me. We'll continue the book of Acts next time. Make sure you join me. Peter's not through yet. And uh, this is a lot of fun. At least I'm having fun. I hope you are too. Thank you for spending this time with me and studying with me. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.